guys, back with another requested run. Today I'm doing a halfling with a bow. The goal is to build around the crossbow for damage uh, and to pick two skills that don't really synergize with an attack build and just use those for utility. So I think I'm going to go with Vacuum Grenade and Displacement Bolt. These are both good skills, but and they kind of combo together a little bit. But in this case, I'm just going to leave them at level 1, not really try to do any damage with my skills, and just use them for utility. In the case of Vacuum Bolt, or Vacuum Grenade, obviously it's a little bit of crowd control, it's a little bit of a stun. Displacement Bolt, also a stun, a good way to get out of trouble. I also have the Halfling Sneak Attack to slow down any enemies that are going after me. Um, and then, of course, the Halfling Sneak Attack is giving me a bonus damage to my attack. So the goal here is to get my crossbow really, really strong. And we'll see what the world offers me in terms of crossbow upgrades. So I'm going to immediately just swap in, using the Displacement Bolt there just to start the fight earlier. I am going to basically be spamming off my Halfling Sneak, so I'm not usually going to use it to try to position. Because I have the crossbow, uh, I'm going to mostly be attacking from range. I will go ahead and pick up <clears throat> Overworld items. I don't want cooldown reduction, that would be great if I was building around these two skills, but instead I am building around my attack, so I'm going to force it, even if the items give me better options. <clears throat> so there I use the Vacuum Grenade again, just to pull the Minotaur off of me. You notice the Minotaur does stop moving when I sneak attack. In general, most enemies will stop their sort of... Uh, artificial intelligence cycles uh, as soon as you sneak, so that can be really cool for like freezing guys in place, like those guys are all kind of frozen. I'll just vacuum there to like get myself some room. It's also a good damage source, obviously I can use it to kill guys. At this point in the game, even though my intention is to build around crossbow, I haven't invested any money in upgrading anything, so the reality is that my skills are still a great source of damage. Now, once I start investing uh, gold into upgrading my crossbow in various ways, it's not going to be the case that these skills are going to do much damage, relatively speaking. But for now, I think I'll just go ahead and use them for a little bit of extra damage. Obviously, my crossbow is doing most of the work. And just using the displacement bolt there for positioning, I think is a good option. One goal with the skill designs is to make sure that they are still worth something even if you leave them at level 1. So it's not true that every skill is going to work very well at level 1, especially the pure damage skills are going to tend to fall off in effectiveness if you don't put any points into them or, or any accent on skill mastery. But <clears throat> most skills, like Vacuum and Displacement Bolt, they still have a guaranteed stun built into them. There's no need to put points into them. They can very much be utilized as pure utility to complement something like an auto attack based build like I'm going for here like I'm gonna force whether it works or not okay so the bazaar's up here I do want to see a set dealer but I'm pretty sure one of the set dealers is gonna be in between here so I'm just gonna stop here see if there's something really good like battle bracer so once again I see a great item for skill builds so so far the game has not supported an auto attack build at all but that's okay I can still force it Again, I'm going to start the fight with Displacement Bolt. Um, I should probably actually have blown up. I'll go ahead and blow up the Halloran Altar. <clears throat> because I don't have burst damage, I haven't actually spent any money upgrading my dude. So I'm pretty underpowered at this little moment in time. Uh, I'm going to use this guy as bait. So as the Necromancers try to raise him, I'm going to try to just go ahead and... Oops, I totally screwed that up. What I was going to say is, as they try to raise, I'm just going to keep machine gunning him down. But again, as you see, I'm kind of relying on my skills for a little damage boost right now because I haven't had a chance to upgrade my auto attack. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> I'm going to move here before activating dust. There's a chance the blacksmith is here. Of course, there's a chance he's up here. Um, but I'll also be able to hit one mountain if I move here. So that gives me a chance of getting a gold mountain, which I think is worthwhile. I do need to be a little more careful to stop getting myself hit. I've been sort of, oops, and as I say that, I walk into a, a ninja star. Um, I've been sort of trying to talk about positioning and stuff. For now, I'll just start attacking. Again, my attack is pretty weak at the moment, but I intend to improve it soon. So no gold there. 
Let's see what sets are in the world. Okay, so this one supports an auto attack based build. Otherwise, it's actually a lot of support for skill mastery builds. The Tormentor's Ring uh, could be good if, if I was worried about area of effect damage. So, the Tormentor's Ring is really cool um, for a few reasons. One, if I'm going to be building around my crossbow, I'm not actually going to have any area of effect damage. And so, in fights with a lot of guys, like against summoners, I might struggle to bring down all of the summon dudes before I kill the summoners. Uh, I'll be really good against like single targets like bosses, but the Tormentor set would be a good hedge against like being stuck, unable to do area of effect damage, because I know that I do want to build around the single target crossbow. That said, I'm just going to skip it. I'm going to try, try to show single target crossbow in action. Uh, I, I don't think that's actually a good idea. I think I would have built that set typically, but I really want to just like, I want to show off a sort of core crossbow build where you don't get anything like that to account for its inherent weaknesses. So unfortunately it looks like I don't have enough damage to get a merciless clear here. Um, yeah, I'm just not killing these guys fast enough. Like, if I use my AoE perfectly, and I keep using my stuns perfectly, I might just barely cheat out of Merciless Clear. So yeah, I got Merciless, but that was really hard. I really had to, like, be careful about how I was invoking all my various skills. I do think I will go ahead and hit here, and then here. I might as well heal. I've been playing like crap. Better to be safe than sorry. So again, I'm still doing a lot of my damage with those area of effect skills, uh, but but that's because I haven't had a chance to upgrade my crossbow yet. Normally, again, if I saw items like this, I probably would have switched into a skill-based build, but this absolutely can work. This uh, crossbow build can work, even without immediate item support. So my vacuum there interrupted one of his mines. It is kind of annoying for me when he creates these mine dudes. I'm going to use my skills to try to interrupt them. Uh, because, again, I'm single target damage, so I can't like automatically kill them. So I interrupted him there again with the vacuum. And I am just spamming off that halfling sneak again. You'll notice. Uh, that's just for the bonus damage. Okay. I'm going to dust the bazaar. I have 350 gold. I'm really hoping there are two items I want to buy here. This item is great for an auto attack build. That's just pure attack damage, which I could really use at this point. Um, skill mastery, movement speed and health, you know, that would keep me alive. It's on sale, but I feel very confident if I'm going to go with a crossbow based build, it's not going to be hard to stay alive. I'm always going to be far from the enemy. I need to worry about getting damage so that I can actually finish fights. I will go ahead and pick up the piece of Berserker's chest. Since both of the missing pieces, I was missing both the boots and chest, which are both sold at a blacksmith, I knew there was no chance that I would be able to complete the set uh, unless in the next world, unless, uh, unless I made some progress here. So I went ahead and did that. I think I'll go ahead and get the Lipperschine lens too. I want to I wanna see what's out in the world. So I don't think I'll use it just yet. Again, I'm going to start the fight just jumping in. So you see what a huge difference that made. Now, all of a sudden, I can do damage with my crossbow. So it's very important to get that first item or two that really amplifies your attack damage. A little teleport here. Farm an extra spot. Again, I'm just teleporting right into the thick of things because I know I can always sort of kite back as a halfling. You can use that vacuum grenade, pull these together. And again, you notice when I'm sure that I want to kill an enemy, I'm, I'm just right clicking, I'm activating that halfling sneak attack for the bonus damage. Again, if things get hairy, I could use that sneak attack as sort of a repositioning skill. Uh, but that hasn't really been the case, so I'm mostly just spamming it off for extra damage. And again, I'm using my skills there to interrupt his attacks. I didn't quite interrupt his grenade throw there. But you see the crossbow is doing great work. Again, it's good that I got an attack damage upgrade because I already had a lot of attack speed uh, from the pieces of the Berserker set and also from the fact that I'm a halfling. 
Okay, I will start with the sweep. So I upgraded my spyglass, which means I can reveal a ton of the map straight away. I unfortunately did not reveal the bazaar, but I did reveal, hmm, not the blacksmith either. I'm gonna take another sweep. Okay, so there's the bazaar and the blacksmith. And a gold mountain up here. Ooh, which god do I want? Hmm. I think that I will teleport here. Dust. That'll hit both the blacksmith and the bazaar. That will almost guarantee that I get the set item I want from the blacksmith. And it will mean I get to see a lot of items at the bazaar. Again, I want a position here because I get kind of a two for one on the dust. Uh, by doing it this way... I get a lot of value out of my last remaining dust. And since, again, I only have one dust, it's important to use it efficiently at this point. I get a chance to pick up another. Okay, so I just used Displacement Bolt there to interrupt him, and I'll use my Vacuum Grenade to interrupt him again. My crossbow is doing work. I'm very happy with my damage output. You know, I probably should have teleported right there. This might even be a Gold Mountain. Oh, actually, I, s I see both Gold Mountains, so no. It is definitely not a gold mountain. All right, so let's see what's at the bazaar first. Okay, obviously it has the, the piece of my missing set, but I'm gonna try to buy this from the set dealer. There's no guarantee it will be at the set dealer, but it's highly likely because I dusted. Uh, actually, maybe I should just pick it up here and avoid the point. Yeah, I think that's better. So I'll go ahead and pick up Sepicles. Sepicles is a great god when you're building around your attack. Um, so with these two upgrades, I actually have a huge attack speed boost. The statue itself is providing 30 attack speed, but the buff that I'm going to get from Sepicles is providing another 20 attack speed. That's the god favor buff. Um, and on top of that, I completed the Berserker set, which means I'm now getting the 40 attack speed and I'm getting stacking attack speed with each attack. So I am now officially a machine gun halfling. This should be pretty fun. Um, I'll just go ahead and wreck. Hmm. I don't have enough gold to shop at this wise man, otherwise I'd path around along the right. I'm just gonna path along the left, and I'm gonna go ahead and wreck Fuhrer. So I believe that I should be able to merciless clear pretty easily here, but I need to make sure that I don't let these little guys escape. So I need to make sure that like I hit them a few times in a row when I do attack them. The big guys are pretty easy to bring down because I actually have pretty good like sustained DPS. I just, I, the fact that I don't kill the little guys in one shot means I have to be really careful or displacement bolt swap them away from their portals to guarantee the merciless defense. So there it was. I will wreck Fuhrer's temple. Uh, again, I'm doing this just to try to get more favor with Sepicles. I'd love to max him out. Okay, so one guy down. So I used my vacuum grenade there and then my displacement bolt to stun the flesh eaters. I knew they would want to eat that corpse. So again, just the, even though my displacement bolt is not doing a ton of damage, just the utility of having it as a guaranteed stun is really, really strong and should not be overlooked. I'm also using the displacement bolt just to start the fights. If this was a daily, for example, it would be really important that I get that extra value. <clears throat> uh, in, just in terms of clear time. Obviously, it's not important here, but why not clear things a little more quickly? One of the nice things about Displacement Bolt. I don't have any dust, so this uh, wise man isn't going to be worth a lot to me. I can... I could just path down to this mini-boss. I don't have to waste the teleport. I could path down here, hit the mini-boss, hit it here, and hit the wise man, then I have to teleport. Yeah, since I have teleports but not dust, I think that's the way to go. Again, you notice I'm spamming off my uh, Halfling Sneak Attack just for the bonus damage. You don't need to stop attacking to make use of it. You get one second of bonus damage after activating it. So it's a good way to just pump a little more damage into your target of choice. There wasn't a whole lot of reason to swap in there, but it's a little extra damage. And now the beatdown begins. So I swapped in there to interrupt his attack just because I want to stay attacking him. I don't want him to get away from me. That case is gonna go very far. All right. Still no dust, so obviously I'm not gonna make use of that. I went ahead and swapped the Minotaur out. You have, you know, you could really do anything in terms of swapping guys around. Uh, but I like 
when there's only one of a particular enemy type, I sometimes like to swap that one enemy type out so I can focus just on uh, one enemy type at a time. So I was only proximate then to the Flesh Eaters. Okay, so here, there are only two skills I would consider upgrading. Obviously the Sneak Attack, which then gives me a bigger attack damage bonus every time I use it. Or the Crossbow. I'm going to go ahead and upgrade Crossbow just because I think it's fun. I don't think it's necessarily the most cost-effective upgrade. I think you can absolutely build around crossbow without ever upgrading the marksman. But if you are struggling to dodge guys, uh, it's a great upgrade. It gives you a huge amount of attack range. It gives you a huge slow. It makes it really easy to stay alive. Again, not usually my favorite choice because you're only getting 10 attack damage from uh, the upgrade. But if you want to stay far away from guys, it's absolutely a great choice. I will go ahead and wreck the altar first. Uh, because I don't want to have to fight all these guys twice, even if they are flesh eaters and they kill each other. Oops, let this guy eat. That's okay, you see how slow he is? With my upgraded crossbow, it's kind of ridiculous. This build is feeling pretty good. Again, my, my clear time so far is not super fast, and I think that's mostly because I had a really slow start in terms of items. Since I was committed to just building around the crossbow, and the item pool did not really provide anything to help me out in the early game, it took me a long time to fight my way through those early fights. And again, with a single target build, I'm not going to be uh, clearing the large area of effect fights too quickly. But I'm pretty good against the single targets, and hopefully I'll pick up some additional power-ups soon. Uh, let's see... I am kind of just looking for the bazaar at this point. I would definitely love to hit a town and hopefully buy some dust. I keep, you know, I have this upgraded spyglass through the Lippershin lens, and I would love to get more value out of it. I keep revealing these treasure mountains and not having any dust to actually pull the bonus gold out. So hopefully that'll change soon. But ooh, I really missed an opportunity at an easy hook here. Ah. Oh, so much for that. So I should have been positioned a little farther to the right. I wasn't really paying attention as that goblin swarm came in, and as a result, there wasn't an easy way to line up that hook. I think I still could have gotten it if I was smart, or I could have taken two shots at it if I had been further to the left. There's a number of ways I could have dealt with that, but instead I just missed. All right, dust on sale, that's awesome. Battle brazers on sale, that's awesome. Okay, so now, now the world is starting to give me a little bit more favorable drops. Um, let's... I'm gonna swap out a Flesh Eater. I want to kill the Grenadier first. He's the guy with infinite range in the group, and so it makes my life easier to just go ahead and drop him first. No, no, don't eat. Okay. First down the Flesh Eaters. First down everybody. Feeling pretty strong. I feel like I could... I could probably go ahead and just take this build into the late game without a whole lot of trouble. Um, but, you notice my damage is still not that great. I haven't done a lot to support my damage. I have, you know, the one set and the one big damage booster item, but I could certainly do better. I'll go ahead and hit... Actually, I'm tempted to hit the treasure lair and the mini boss first so that I can afford two items at the bazaar. I'll think that over. Again, swapping myself in just to get close to these guys. I have such good movement speed. And I have such good attack range that I can easily just sort of stay near these guys, and I'm very safe. If things get hairy, I can use one of my guaranteed stuns. But there's really no way for things to go wrong with this build. Okay, so the problem with hitting the mini boss and then the bazaar is then I have to teleport out of here. And I only have one teleport, so it might be worth preserving it. On the other hand, if there's two items I want at this bazaar, that would be really sad. So, let's just go ahead and do it like this. I should probably save my stuns against this guy. I want to stun him whenever he puts his shield up. Like that, so that I can just keep attacking him. I've kind of got myself in a corner here. Uh, so I'm going to sneak attack. You notice when I sneaked, there was nothing that the enemies did. They just kind of let me walk freely. So that's a really cool thing about having sneak. You can always use it as a get out of jail free card. And uh, it may not be obvious, but you have free pathing when you're sneaking. So you can actually walk right through guys. 
Okay, so I'm glad that I did get up to 300 gold. The Chainmail is a huge attack speed boost, and the Elixir Freneticus is a huge attack speed boost. So finally I've got like all the core items that make an attack-based build really good. Obviously there's ways this could be a lot better, like if I had picked up a Bolt Thrower set or something along those lines. But I should be quite strong now, because I am attacking super duper fast. Yeah, it's kinda silly how fast I'm attacking. My damage did take a big hit, and the fact that I don't have any procs, like a bolt throwers or a staggering strike or anything along those lines is kind of a bummer. Uh, but, my goodness, I hit fast. I don't even need to blow up this altar. I can just soften everyone up and then kill them in a hurry before anything revives. As long as nothing revives, you don't really have to worry about, about Necrus altars too much. Okay, again, I should be able to Merciless, but it's not going to be that easy because I don't one-shot guys. So I have to make sure that once I start attacking a little guy, I stay right on him and actually finish him off. No! I almost let a guy get away there. Oops. I was trying to use my other stuff. Sequence that incorrectly. Alright, so let's pull these guys away. Alright, so another Merciless Defense. That is one very nice thing about uh, attack damage based builds. You can almost always rather easily get a Merciless Defense. Often, if you have a skill based build and your cooldowns are not that great, or if your skills do not quite kill the goblins in one hit, it can be really hard to get a Merciless Defense just based on cooldowns. But in this case, <clears throat> since I'm doing all my damage with my weapon, and obviously my weapon has a very low cooldown because I'm also building attack speed, uh, it's pretty easy for me to go ahead and hit guys constantly. So I just swap this guy way out, so he has to walk all... Oh no, there goes my Flawless Streak. Uh, I swapped him far away from where he spawns, so that he has a long walk home. And you notice with the slow from my crossbow, there's like no chance he's going to get off screen. Before I kill him. I don't even need to use my vacuum to pull him back. Of course I could. Oops, gotta dodge a bit. Not too hard though, because I've got all that movement speed. Easy clear. Unfortunately, I did lose that flawless streak. I was kind of proud of that flawless streak. Oh well. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and dust this town. Oh, that was lucky to hit a treasure layer there. Just because I want to buy more overworld items. Hmm. So I want the attack damage boost for sure. At this point, the run is kind of one, so I'm just going to buy Dust and the and the Gnomish Dust Blade. Um, just because I think it's really fun to show off that particular overworld item. When you do have, like, spare Dusts, uh, it is so strong to just, like, go ahead and uh, pick up the Dust Blade. It turns your Dusts not only into this great item for, like, revealing additional item choices at shops, but it's also a potent scouting tool. So I'll show that off in a second here. Again, my damage is not like is the greatest. Uh, it gets a lot better when I activate my half on sneak attack. But okay, so I'm just gonna dust here and you see how much of the map it revealed. So I see, for example, that the bazaar is over here. I'm trying to think if there's anything I even want from the bazaar at this point. I have a lot of great items from there. I guess like an elixir of giant growth would be really cool. I haven't seen any of those this way. Um, so I'm just going to interrupt these guys as they try to revive their brothers. I'm using those guaranteed stuns. You see there's still a lot of value in the guaranteed stuns. Snekromancer has a long walk to revive his buddy, so I can easily kill him before he does so. And then I'll stun that guy to bring down his shield. Okay. Uh, what the heck. I'll fight a mini-boss just because this build is like so good against single-target mini-bosses. This perm is slowed, I can pretty much interrupt any of his attacks if I want to. I can easily sidestep any of his attacks if I want to. Machine gunning. Okay. Alright, so there's giant growth. I'll take it. So I'm now a little bit bigger. I'm not attacking as fast, but I'm attacking a lot harder. 
Uh, I actually, you know, I just realized I don't have any warp stones, so... It will be easier to Merciless Clear here because I'm now hitting hard enough to kill these guys in just a few shots. Uh, so, I just want to make sure I don't let it... This is actually not, like, ideal positioning of these treasure blocks, so I need to make sure I don't let anyone get away. Let's kill the little guy first, just so I don't accidentally graze him and let him sneak away. Alright, so the Merciless Chain continues. Again, a big benefit, in my opinion, of building around uh, your weapon. It's quite easy to guarantee Mercilesses. I am going to just go ahead and kill the Halloran Temple. I don't need to. I have plenty of burst damage, such that I could kill these guys even without, you know, stopping the healing. But I do get a little more favor with Sepicles, and there's a chance that that'll allow me to get up to rank 3 with Sepicles, although I kind of doubt it based on the fact that I haven't seen Seven Phases Temple yet. Again, if I had any warp stones, I would use my looking glass to find Sephiroth's temple, but the reality is, even if I were to find his temple, I probably wouldn't be able to get there. So there's no point in wasting my looking glass. I will go ahead and dust this town, uh, because I want, yeah, warp stones badly. What the heck, let's buy boots. Normally I wouldn't buy a health movement speed booster, but I think it's fun just to like move around super, super fast when you've got like a weapon-based build. So now I don't even like need my displacement bolt. I can, to get in on that initial fight, <clears throat> I can just bolt all over the place. And I will go ahead and bolt this guy into the corner. He runs immediately out. Uh, so I'm just gonna focus on him and when he does his eight-way attack, you see his wings go back like that. I'll just go ahead and stun him then. It's not that I would have any trouble dodging this attack. Um, ooh, I just... I barely walked into that fire and I lost my flawless streak again. That's so sad. So I wouldn't have had any trouble dodging his attacks. But it's... You know, I find that 8-way attack sort of the most difficult to deal with. Uh, so I think it's nice to interrupt it. So I don't have to deal with it. I think Halloran would be very easy. You see how good my single target burst is. I can easily kill his followers even when he tries to heal them. I think Necris would be a slight bit challenging just because he has so many targets and I have no area of effect damage. Fury and Sepicles, I think again with my slow, it just becomes so easy. I think Necris is by far the hardest choice here. Proctus, the boss fight would be a little annoying, but I actually have the area of effect stuns in both Vacuum Grenade and Displacement Bolt. Bolt actually stuns everyone you teleport through, so it'd be very easy for me to deal with him as well. I think Necris would be the hardest choice here. I don't think anything can stop this build, personally, and I'm just going to go ahead and reveal pretty much the whole map. <clears throat> I should have spaced those differently. Um, oh well. Let's just sort of march towards the boss. I don't really need anything in this build. I've got plenty of power. In these Necris fights, I have plenty of movement speed to keep myself alive. I just need to be smart about who I target down first. Um, but certainly I feel quite strong with this build. It should not be hard. I do think it's important to note when you're building around the auto attack like this. Um, you know, in this case I only saw one set that looked like it would complement my build. So I immediately prioritized that set. I'm going to isolate this guy. So I use Displacement Bolt to get him sort of all by himself. And then I can bring him down. Actually, I'm trying to decide if I want to finish him. Because he will revive when I finish him. Maybe I should finish him last. Oh well. Oops. I didn't bolt quite fast enough to dodge that attack. Oh well. I probably should have went ahead and focused him down as I originally planned. Uh, so now he's out of the picture. Now the fight's not as scary. He's by far the hardest enemy to dodge here. Hmm. So everyone does keep coming back, which is annoying. Again, if I had the Tormentor set, if I knew that I was going to have to face Necris in this run, uh, I would have probably gone ahead and picked up the Tormentor set. I'll backtrack here just to just to upgrade. Eh, why not? No, I don't need a healing potion. Healing potion... Is definitely not needed here. So I could upgrade my bow to have insane range and slow. I'll just go ahead and upgrade this for a little better burst damage when I activate Halfling Sneak. Um, either one would be a fine choice there, I think. Once again, the boulder thrower. So 
let's go ahead and isolate him like I did last time, but actually kill him this time. So now he's kind of on one side, everyone else is on the other side, and when he comes back to life, I'll just go ahead and kill him again before he gets a chance to do anything. I used my stun there to interrupt him. So that's kind of the smart way I could have done the last fight. Very, very safe. If anyone ever surrounds me, I can use my displacement bolt to get away. I can use my stun. I can use my halfling sneak attack again to reposition. So, super, super safe build. Halfling is great for building around his auto attack, I think, for a variety of reasons. Okay, I'll dust here again. Why not? That gives me a little bit of attack damage. Why not? Uh, Alright, it's pretty clear I can take the normal fights, so let's see how I kill the boss man. Okay, I move so fast it's pretty easy to dodge. Again, if things are looking hairy... Actually, okay, I'm gonna try to... No! I was gonna try to kill him before he got off screen, but there's no good way to do it. I don't have enough stuns. Or low enough cooldowns on my stuns. So I'll just mow down all these little guys. Again, it's so easy to sidestep everyone. Trying to stun him, so oops, got myself hit. That's kind of sad. Um, I was trying to mow him down in a hurry so that he didn't summon any buddies. But anyways, there's an example of an auto attack based build. That wasn't a very fast clear, and I think in general your auto attack based builds, especially when you have a single target weapon like this, they're not going to give you as good of a daily time unless you have just the right item support out the gate. And in this case, the item support wasn't that great to start the run, uh, so you know it really slowed me down in the early start. But, but still a good run, and I certainly could have shaved a few minutes off that if I had tried to avoid fights in the god plane, that sort of thing. Thanks again for the request. Thanks for watching.